The Huntington's focus on collecting source material, on getting as close to the historical moment as possible, extends to California architecture. So the Richfield building by the Atlantic Richfield Company, which was considered the sort of premier art deco masterpiece in Los Angeles on Bunker Hill, was taken down in the late 60s. Um, so that was quite a loss for people. Um, then there was the Central Library, which was being slated for demolition in the mid-1970s. So we didn't have a preservation um, organization to act as advocates for any of these buildings. So the Los Angeles Conservancy came to be in the late 1970s, and right around that time, there were curators and other institutions who decided to take it upon themselves to preserve architectural records, which was a separate part of this. The core of our architecture collection documents the period between the 1920s to the 1940s, when Los Angeles's population tripled. Themed buildings like the Mayan Theater were very, very popular. An entire book could be written on that building. Every corner is full of, it's not just eye candy, it's a lot to take in. And, you know, but we can't forget that people put their heart and souls into this. This is not just vernacular architecture. People really, really wanted to do this. And, um, and they enlisted a uh, Mexican artist to come up with the Mayan motifs that you see all over the building. I mean, in the basement, you know, the, the fire curtain and the ceiling and the chairs and everything. Aaron Chase's exhibition, Architects of a Golden Age, marks the first general survey of this collection. Chinatown is such an important part of Los Angeles's past, um, and indeed the Chinatown, the original Chinatown, was displaced to put Union Station in its place on Alameda. Um, the Chinatown that came to be, that is represented in the show, um, is, in my opinion, an expression of the, the will and fortitude of the Chinese Americans who were here. And I think people don't understand that Chinatown is not a, a disnified, you know, um, Chinatown. It's not just a, a motif. It's, it was developed by Chinese, fully financed by Chinese, for Chinese businesses. And it's still that way. I mean, this collection is so stellar because we have a lot of hand-drawn documents, not just blueprints. In fact, I don't even prefer to collect blueprints unless it's the only remaining, you know, evidence of, of a building plan. Why? Because they're so difficult to, well, first of all, they're not first generation. So we are all, we are into, the Huntington really likes to collect primary source materials. So um, some people think that a blueprint is, and sometimes it is. Maybe, you know, that hand-drawn document was thrown away and copies were made in the form of blueprints and that's all that's left, so that would make it a primary document. But you know, this, this show is really about, um, everything in the show is something done by hand, and I did that on purpose, because I want people to understand um, that architects were really artists, and that you know, they had a full concept, there was a full idea that they were trying to bring to fruition um, by creating something on paper or board with, with paint or with um, ink on linen or pencil on tissue.